BBI kwisha maneno Of course we all are aware that court rulings normally take a long time and this was a populated bench but this is what an ordinary Kenyan says yani hawa somi walihitaji 10 hours kumaliza BBI vizuri <laughs> Yani hawa watu wana huruma songefanya 30 minutes ama the most 2 hours sasa hii 10 hours kuchoma na kuchoma na kuchoma na kumaliza <laughs> anyway i've been under a lot of pressure to say something after the bbi ruling and i've been wondering to myself what do i say because i said a lot of things before the ruling i said it all what more could i add and you know i don't like wasting people's time producing a video for views and saying nothing absolutely nothing and i was having this discussion with somebody and they were saying yani we crazy you're funny your followers your fans want you to say something say something repeat yourself if you must but say something you know there are things which keep people awake at night sometimes they sleep and then they wake up in a cold sweat because of this thing it's worrying them and this person knows i have many concerns for the motherland for my dear country called kenya They know that I'm not affiliated to any politician but they also know I can't stand politicians who want to finish the country called Kenya they know that and so this fellow decided to hit me with my own hammer Chris are you telling me you wake up at night in a cold sweat just because you produced a video where you said nothing or just because you produced a video where you repeated yourself <laughs> what's wrong with you chris okay let me confess what i also confessed to this person i don't fear to speak the truth but my weakness is that i always avoid i do a lot everything in my power to avoid emotional discussions and debates i avoid them like the plague with people i care about and so you can say that many times i avoid saying things which could hurt some of my followers some of my fans that the truth yes but why get into an emotional discussion that will take us absolutely nowhere that will add no value yeah and leave somebody very upset leave somebody a mess emotionally you see there are many people i respect many people i love who are firm supporters of the anti bbi brigade yeah they don't like the bbi they hate the bbi and some of them are firm supporters of the deputy president they love him they can't wait for august 9th 2022 to vote for him and they all know that i was a firm believer in the bbi they've heard all that i've said about the bbi and about those who want to fight it and why they are fighting it so why rub salt on wounds why recycle and repeat what i've been saying there's no need but a discussion i had late last night gave me an idea this was a discussion with somebody who does not know much about kenya they are trying to understand kenya via the social media via the headlines political headlines and so he says chris tell me what was so bad about the bbi were people going to be hanged for doing something yeah hanging act 
what was in the BBI that was going to harm Kenya so much? My response, in a nutshell, the BBI ran into problems only because of something called the process. So are you telling me that this was something good for Kenya? But it failed because of the way the people who wanted to implement it went about it? My response, correct. 1000% correct. But I need to add that the BBI was a victim of raw political ambition for the highest office by somebody. And it was also a victim of the raw emotions of Kenyans suffering. Period. Let me tell you a story to illustrate this. And it is a true story. This man came across this family of a single mother that was really suffering. And he took pity on them and he started assisting them with food, shopping, paying rent here and there. He did good. Yeah, he was assisting. He was being human. The good side of a human being. And then some women went to see his wife. And they told his wife, this husband of yours, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He is visiting this single woman. He is pouring money into this single woman's family. Vile tunaona iko kitu. And this good man's wife, who was also a good wife who understood her husband, ignored this woman because she knew her husband. She knew his history. How many women had she seen throw themselves at her husband and her husband ignores them? Her husband had money, but then he also had character. That combination usually makes women go crazy. But the wife of this man knew that this man's life had been changed by something that happened a long time ago at a place called Calvary. And so she knew that whatever any woman does, her husband was immune. But then one day, her mother, the mother to this wife, and her sister entered the scene. And they convinced her that she was being naive. They told her, this is a man. We don't care what he has been through. We don't care what he believes. He is a man. And men behave in a certain way. Usilalie maskio, they told her. There are many poor people. There are many needy families. Why this particular family of these gorgeous, very beautiful, single woman? Why? Why this one? And he's spending a lot of money. And you know that I don't have enough water tanks in our rural home. That's the mother talking to her daughter. You know very well that the only cow we had which was producing milk died. This husband of yours is spending money on somebody who is not even related to us. Rubbish. And so you can guess what happened next. A good innocent thing was reduced into raw emotions. And the good man was forced, yeah, in order to keep his marriage, was forced to stop doing this good thing. Now the truth is that in this particular case, the process was also flawed. Any wise man will tell you that if you want to assist another woman, you must involve your wife. Do it through your wife. And when you do that, you'll be fully protected. Even if you are a powerful servant of God, 
A wise woman once recommended in a book, her name is Rebecca Brown, Dr. Rebecca Brown, a medical doctor, she recommended a pastor should never see a woman alone. Why? Because we also have things that happen in the spiritual realm. Yeah, that could harm him, that could put him in an irresistible trap. I've given this other tip many times on this channel. If you're a businessman and you're going to do a major deal, go with your wife. It is impossible for you to be conned if you're with your wife. Because she will see things you can never see in a hundred years. Even if she never went beyond standard one, go with your wife. My apologies, I've really digressed. But I'm sure now you've gotten the point. Many factors conspired to frustrate a good thing, to frustrate the BBI. But it is also true to say that the promoters of the BBI were not wise. Just like this good man who took pity on a single mother and her family. His intentions were noble, yes, but he was not wise. Rest in peace, BBI, until we meet again. Now, fortunately, the BBI is not human, and therefore it can be resurrected in the future. Now, for followers of the deputy president, congratulations are in order. Well done. You have defeated powerful forces in the country called Kenya. Well done. And so it is also true to say that in protecting the Constitution, Deputy President William Samoy Ruto has done something for Kenya, which is good if we ignore the allegations that his motivation was selfish. He has done something for Kenya. But I need to quickly ask, what else? has he done for the country called Kenya? Apart from frustrating the BBI, what else has he done for Kenya? Because I will not stop reminding voters in Kenya that that is a very important question to ask about any presidential candidate. In my view, and this is going to be controversial, but 100% true, Raila Odinga has also done something for Kenya. I believe it was possible for the handshake principles to do what the government did, what the government of Uhuru and Ruto did in 2017, after the Supreme Court nullified the election. Yeah. They forced things through yeah, so that they won. I believe it was also very possible for Uhuru and Raila to force things through so that the BBI would have passed. But they resisted that temptation. Oh, how I wish in 2017 that Uhuru and Ruto would have resisted the temptation to force things through. Had they resisted that temptation, many lives in Kenya would have been saved. So, what is the difference between 2017, after the elections, and 2021, after the first BBI ruling? You can't deny the truth. The difference is Ray Laudinga is in the mix, is on the side that had the capability to force things. And so we need to ask ourselves, what would happen? If the deputy president is once again on the side that can force things through, what do you think will happen? Will we have a repeat of 2017? I leave you to figure out that for yourself without emotion. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.